prominent biologist and atheist Richard Dawkins created major controversy this week when he was asked a hypothetical question on Twitter about the ethics of aborting a child with Down syndrome. Dawkins advised his Twitter follower to abort a fetus with Down syndrome and try again. Dawkins went on to say women have the right, a right to early abortion. Choice is theirs. Down syndrome is one of the most is one of the commonest and most moral reasons to exercise that right. Billy Hollowell is the faith editor at The Blaze, joins me now from New York. Billy, I think that when it comes to abortion, there are many people that are pro-choice. But on the subject of Down syndrome, I think that's one of those gray areas that Richard Dawkins has stepped into. And to that, I would add, why stop there? Why not abort all fetuses that are girls for that matter? What's your take? Yeah, I mean, you know, I can't quite figure out why you would dive into this subject in 140 characters or less unless you wanted to be getting some sort of attention for it. And I think he may regret that now, but he's also issued an apology. Um, but in the apology, once again, use the word moral and immoral. And I think those words are really tricky here because you're talking about an issue where 90 percent, between 60 and 90 percent of women who test positive do choose to have an abortion when it comes to Down syndrome. But why? Why would you do this in 140 characters? And why would you tell people that it's immoral not to do it if they test positive? What message does that send? Well, let's bring up his apology, because here's what he said. I condensed my advice down to a tweet, and the result was understandably seen in some quarters as rather heartless and callous. Indeed, it was. Of course, I regret using abbreviated phraseology, which caused so much upset. But going back to his initial comments, and yes, he has apologized, but I think he probably stands by it. You know, he's essentially calling for a world in which no one sees a Down syndrome baby ever again. Yeah, I mean, and even in that apology, I have things in front of me right here that I wrote down. He said that you're condemning yourself to a lifetime of caring for an adult with the needs of a child. He used the word immoral again, that based on his definition of morality, it is immoral. So it really wasn't an apology because what he did was he said, if I had more than 140 characters, here's what I would have said. And he said nothing different. He added a little bit more context to it. But absolutely, he's looking at a world in which there's no people with Down syndrome. And I think that this is really a slap in the face to the the parents who have had children with Down syndrome, who have cared for them and who love them and who believe that there's a purpose in those children's lives yeah. um, and that they bring purpose to the parents' lives and the family's lives. So I just don't quite understand. If you're going to apologize, apologize. This is, this is not an apology. You know, who also wanted a world without Down syndrome babies was not, uh, were the Nazis and Hitler. So, um, but I will mention the fact that I have had friends that were told they had, their child had the Down syndrome gene and they ended up keeping the child anyway, and it turned out to actually not have Down syndrome. So there's always that cause for concern, too. Yeah, and this is somebody who's an evolutionary biologist. He's very well known. He's also very well known as an atheist activist, but he's a very intelligent person. So again, he clearly knew what he was putting out there. But if you're telling people if you test positive, it's immoral not to abort, then you're absolutely not even considering the mentions that you just made, which is that it could be possible to test positive when there really isn't um, a fetus with Down syndrome. So yeah. it's just, I, I think that this is an example of wanting attention and he's getting attention and it, it's pretty abysmal. Well, I think. You know, I'd be remiss to not mention the fact that the doctor that actually discovered the Down syndrome gene was pro-life. And when he discovered it, he thought that it would sort of prepare families uh, for what was to come. And it may, in fact, be more of a challenge. But now today, unfortunately, we're seeing more than 80 percent of babies that are or families, parents that are told that their child is the Down syndrome gene are actually aborting that child. It's absolutely horrific. And he is adding to this problem. Yeah, and not only is he adding to this problem, I think he's adding to the problem of, of, you know, atheism in general. When people think of atheism, they have a lot of stereotypes. And there's nothing wrong with not being a believer. That's fine. But I think when you start making these proclamations, you're reinforcing the negative stereotypes that people have about atheism and where it leads. Mm -hmm. And that's the real problem, I think, here in addition to the, uh, the other issue that we've discussed. So if you were advising Richard Dawkins, how would you tell him to sort of uh, come out with an actual apology? 
I think you say, I'm sorry I said it. This isn't a conversation that belongs in Twitter and 140 characters or less. And, and I think you sort of move on from it and you have those discussions. I mean, he did admit, um, and the one thing I will give him, he admitted that this is something he believes that needs to be further debated. So I think maybe he needs to have that debate. Richard Dawkins tends to sort of talk down to people. And if you don't understand what I'm saying, then look this up or go over here and get more context. He should have a conversation with some of these families maybe. Um, I think that would be the proper apology and the proper course forward. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, Billy, well, that's all the time we have. Thank you very much. Thank you.